How's it going everyone? This is MindBlank, welcome back to my channel and today we are going to do a popular mod amongst RX Vega owners, the Raijin Tech Morpheus 2 Aftermarket Cooler Retrofit. So I am going to walk you through, we are going to install this thing and we are going to see some results and see if the effort is indeed worth it. I think I stand alone or with very few when I say that the RX Vega stock reference cooler is actually not that bad. At least when we talk about its cooling capabilities, since as far as acoustic performance goes, well, it's only okay at stock, but cranking the fan up more than the standard 2400 RPM, well, you better have either earphones on or high tolerance to noise in general. But yeah, as far as cooling goes, I really was impressed with what the reference cooler pulled off when I did my undervolt overclock video. 1610MHz locked core and 1070MHz HBM clock is really not bad for around 74 Celsius max temperatures. Of course this came with the 55 plus decibels asterisk at the end, but at least it got me there with no issues. For anyone wanting to push the limits of their card in a nice and quiet manner, today I've got just the solution for you, the Rygentech Morpheus 2 GPU heatsink. This is an aftermarket cooler designed to fit a broad range of GPUs and currently the only option for an RX Vega retrofit. It comes in two color options, with the black painted one being called a core edition. It can handle up to 360 watts of TDP, has a massive 129 cooling fins and no less than 12 heat pipes. Surprisingly for the size it's not that heavy, weighing in at around 1 pound or half a kilo. There's a lot of stuff included here, starting with a multitude of heat sinks for different applications, thermal adhesive pads and regular pads, and clips for both regular and low profile 120 mil fans. This cooler is massive and the black coating looks awesome. While the paint is glossy, fingerprints are not easy to spot since it's charcoal black. But anyway, we've got my power color RX Vega 64 here to fit the Morpheus 2 on, so the first step is obviously taking the reference cooler off of the card. In order to remove it, the simplest indication I can give you is to remove all screws that you see on the back of the card, starting with those that keep the backplate in place. Once you remove these, the back of the PCB is now accessible. One tip for the retention bracket of the stock cooler is to go easy on the four screws here and in opposite corners. There's a lot and I mean a lot of tension on it, so be careful as it tends to spring back wildly when loosened. You can now remove all other screws here and make sure to take note which goes where since they have different lengths and diameters between them. Following this you can just carefully lift the stock cooler off of the PCB. There's two connectors to remove, the fan connector and the lighting connector for the Radeon logo. And this exposes the Vega die which you, obviously, now have to give a proper cleaning. My particular Vega die is molded so there are no differences in height between the die and the HBM package. If yours has a difference, there's nothing much you can do except use more thermal material to fill this gap. Right, so the Morpheus comes with a lot of heat sinks varying in sizes. I've chosen to only use the small ones to fit on the high and low side MOSFETs. When you install these heatsinks, make sure to not scratch them since they are anodized and by scratching them they may become conductive, which is extremely bad and can kill your card. Also just to be extra sure, cover the entire length and width of the heatsink with the thermal tape before you stick it onto the MOSFETs. I also opted not to use heatsinks on the chokes since they don't generate a lot of heat. If you want to cool them it's up to you and certainly the Morpheus comes with a lot of heatsinks for your choosing. It also comes with a large VRM heatsink with pushpins. Initially I removed these pushpins in order to fit it on the Vega card but due to differences in height between the MOSFET casing and the voltage regulator on the bottom of the card I totally do not recommend you use it. There will be a gap and this heatsink will not be in contact with quite a few MOSFETs so take this as a warning. Following this operation, you just need to prepare the Morpheus for install. There's two brackets that are fixed with screws to the cooler body and on these brackets you have the hexagonal screws that go into the farthest holes here. I'm trying to eliminate any sort of guesswork for you guys on what goes where for the Vega retrofit and I can also tell you that I've used the Mylar spacers that are provided in the kit for Hawaii GPUs. I've learned that for GPU dies the less is more rule regarding the TIM is not applicable. 
There is no IHS here, so my recommendation is to not skimp on the thermal material. Spreading it works best for GPUs, especially large dies like this. I use Noctua's NTH1 just cause it's a great performing paste. Onwards to the actual mounting, where you need to turn the heatsink and place the card on top. The retention bracket is much easier to fit than the stock one since the spring back force is not nearly as strong despite its much bulkier look. Following this, hey we have a fully aftermarket Vega card that's just missing the fans. I suggest you order a mini 4 pin PWM to regular PWM adapter so you can connect and control the fans through software or let the card control them directly. I ordered one from Mod DIY, but it didn't arrive in time for this video, so I have just connected my fans directly to the motherboard. This also works. Not the best or most elegant solution here, but it gets the job done. Since we're talking about the fans, these are far from the quietest fans out there, but they do push quite a nice amount of air. They're from an ID cooling AIO and also have high static pressure. As for the noise, at max RPM, they're slightly, just slightly quieter than the stock Vega reference cooler at 2400 RPM, so also stock. So not bad, but remember, it's up to you what you choose here. You can opt for basically inaudible fans and detriment of a few more degrees. Okay, so let's see what all this got us. With the stock cooler, I got through undervolting and overclocking at the same time to 1610 MHz locked on the core at 1.1 volts and 1070 MHz on the HBM with around 76 to 78 Celsius core temperatures in a 24C ambient. Of course, this was done at the expense of noise since I had to run the fan at 3500 RPM which was completely uncomfortable. With the Rigentech Morpheus 2, we're looking at around 46 to 47 Celsius with the card completely stuck in a 24C ambient as well. But the boost clocks are much higher than what the reference cooler can pull off. Reaching a steady 1580 MHz is what previously I was only able to do only through undervolting on the reference cooler at higher fan RPM, noise and of course temperatures were nowhere near what we're seeing here. But you must be wondering, ok, what can the car do under these circumstances? Well, for one, it can now do 1100 MHz HBM stable, as opposed to 1070 MHz and it can go even higher with a voltage bump. As for the clock speed, well, things aren't really dramatic since Vega seems to hit a wall around 1650-1700 MHz, requiring higher voltages and even better cooling for even better results. I did however get to 1685 MHz locked at 1.18 volts core. You can't go above 1.2 volts on these cards unless you flash the liquid cooled edition BIOS which allows 1.25 volts. So around 75 MHz more than my best undervolt overclock but again noise levels are incomparable as are the temperatures which are excellent around 50 to 51 Celsius in my 24C ambient. So to wrap this up, for anyone interested in this mod, I hope the guide is straightforward enough and eliminates the guesswork on what and how to assemble this huge triple slot custom RX Vega. As far as I'm concerned, if spending the extra 70 or so dollars for this cooler is not a problem since you're committed to your RX Vega purchase, then the results are simply outstanding. You can anyway reuse the Morpheus 2 heatsink with other GPUs you may get in the future, so it's not money lost on only one card. But if you are doing it and sticking to this guide, the temperatures are fantastic and when you combine this with a huge reduction in noise levels, this might already be the ultimate air-cooled aftermarket RX Vega card. Guys and gals, I know some of you will ask for benchmarks at these frequencies, but remember, I have already tested the RX Vega at 1610 MHz core clock and 1070 MHz HBM clock in my initial Ryzen and low latency RAM video. So go ahead and check that out, and by the way, these frequencies should roughly be around 3 to 4% faster. Anyway, Check out my Twitter page, linked in the description, support this channel's growth through my Patreon page and thank you for also supporting this channel by subscribing and see you next time everybody, bye bye.